So it's been a hot minute since we've done anything with uh, hatching or cross hatching, and I wanted to get back to it with uh, a quick one on cylinders. Um, you know, we went over planes and everything, and but we haven't done anything with uh, with curved surfaces, and cylinders are, are pretty easy um, as far as it goes. So I've got a, a few of them like drawn up here, really, really loosely. Um, you know, obviously they're not like they're kind of like wonky cylinders or have a little style to them. Um, so this kind of assumes that you can render cylinders or, or at least lay out the values in cylinders uh, anyway. And, and um, I mean, really, there's, there's really only one, one way to do it. Um, okay, so on the turning edge, right, you probably want to throw a few lines very faintly over here, um, which is kind of like on your light side. Right, if we're getting light here, and then over here in the shadow core, we're probably going to put a bunch of hatching uh, down the length of it this direction, and we're going to do a slightly more dense hatching on the actual shadow core, and we're probably going to develop a spot that's slightly more dense and dark within the shadow core. And then what you're going to do is we're going to go uh, with the arc of the ellipse to sort of run that around. And I think this has a lot to do with just practicing arcs and getting enough of this hatching in there. And as long as they're not straight, or most of them aren't straight, it's going to be fine. It might be better to actually go the other direction, probably from the out, outer edge in. Just kind of get this to happen. Then here on the bottom, um, since it's flat, I think doing a, uh, a flat side would probably work pretty well. And then you can pick any, really any direction, like you could do a 60 degree hatching down here and it would be fine I think um, just to get your network going and then um, you know for the light side you would just come up and and do the same sort of thing right to get your highlight um, you know obviously if you're drawing on tone paper this is how you would do it and if you're not then you don't need to worry about it you can just work on the light side and I think the thing with all of this stuff is the trick is just sort of staying out of the light um, in most situations and making use of the of the paper tones or um, and if you're working on white paper just staying out of it completely um, but I mean you know this isn't really necessarily like the only way to do it um, you could use straight hatching um, the whole way through and I think um, you know if you look back in the uh, the uh, Italian Renaissance stuff, like most most artists would begin their career um, at the stage where they're like being students, you know, copying others' work. Um, they would begin by using straight hatching, and then eventually they would go to using curved hatching. Um, so in our world, we tend to want to short circuit that learning curve, so we just go ahead and do the the round hatching uh, because it just sort of makes sense and what they would do with the straight hatching is they would uh, change the angle sort of like how if you have a if you draw a circle like that that's one way or you could draw a circle by just kind of you know cutting lines off and eventually you get something approximating a circle through straight lines and eventually it looks kind of circular, relatively speaking. So that's kind of what we're doing here. We're just, you know, going along the form, but using straight lines to approximate the circle. And the more, like, the more these change, right, the, the more it's going to look circular. Um, so here we just did, like, 
three directions to kind of go around. And um, you know, you could again repeat that with your with your on the light side with your lights, you know. The other thing that I think about with like with hatching and, and really just any kind of like value thing is um, you want to create like transitions. So what I'm trying to do here is through this create a darker value like on one side and get lighter as we go down. So when we do cross hatching, basically we just make enough marks and eventually it, it starts to read as a tone, right? And you don't want that tone to be like perfectly straight and even all the way across. Um, now here's an interesting thing um, that you have with the cylinder, right? With the first two, we have uh, where we can see two sides of the cylinder, right? You can see the top, you can see the bottom, um, or you can see the bottom. And here you can only see one side, so it's, it's essentially just a flat shape with um, arcs on either end. and. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to follow the form with our marks, right? So we're going to create these like longish S-curve kind of things, right? To, to build up to our shadow side. And again, we're going to make sure that this is kind of like uneven, that there's the transition of value as we go through it. We're going to do a turning edge. We're going to flip to the light, and we're going to do the same thing in the light. Probably going to get more light over here and a lot over here. And we're not really going to get much in here. So as you can imagine, like a light kind of coming from above, it's not going to hit very much in the middle. So um, back down here, um, when we when we go across the forms this way, right, we're going to follow this. But what happens when we get towards the center of this, right? We have a very clear one going this way, and on the other side we have it going the opposite way. We have to pick a point sort of where we'd have like a horizon line, maybe here, where we switch directions, right? Now, if I come here and I put this straight line here, that's going to kill all of the curved hatching work that I've done. So I want to avoid that straight line and even maybe just avoid hatching there altogether and just come down and create round hatching until I get about there and then just like sort of leave that blank and then um, switch. and come back to it down here. And you know, then I can do the same thing on the light side, right? So around here. And I won't have this problem because I'm not going to be putting a lot of hatching here in the center. So I can just come back down and pick it up here, right? So that's really it for um, for hatching uh, on cylind uh, cylindrical forms. Um, you basically have two options. You follow the form in, in one direction, and you follow the form in the other direction, and that's really it. You know, if you wanted to um, include some stuff on the you know on the ground, you would just then pick the point where your shadow core comes out, pull your shadow shape out from behind on that on that. And then you would uh, then just follow the form of the ground, right? You know, the ground's flat, so you could probably get away with doing hatching that's just um, parallel to the bottom of the page, straight across. Um, you could cross hatch maybe this way. That could be pretty interesting. And then build up your tone that way. And again, you know, these are suggestions, they're not laws. You know, if you've, the, the most important thing is that you engage with this yourself 
and figure out your own way of doing this, right? Because cross hatching is kind of like a signature. Every artist has their signature, and everybody, every artist has their signature way of doing, um, doing hatching and cross hatching. It's kind of um, something that is a great way to to pull out your personality, right? And even if you're using pencil, I would suggest um, thinking about how you make marks and becoming conscious of it and um, begin to use them to define form, but also to define who you are. And uh, because I think that's what ultimately people want to see is they want to see you in your piece and uh, you in your drawing. Um, they don't want to see, you know, someone else or you imitating someone else. And, you know, we, we know when we batch up, then we've got these, um, these tones that are built up through through cross hatching, right? They they begin to look like areas of mass as if we had uh, you know painted them out with a brush or more solidly. So that is it on um, on cross hatching on cylinders, and we'll continue on with another video soon.